normal day at the studio would pretty much involve me coming in maybe probably an, an hour before the client um, or the night before. We would set up everything. Um, I would start by finding out what the client would need. Okay, you run in drums, you're, you know, bass, guitar, your standard instruments. So they would come in and we'd bring all the gear in. We'd set up the drum set. We'd start putting mics on it. Um, we would, I would place the mics in such a way to get isolation from each other drum uh, and log on my track sheet, you know, kick drum goes to this preamp to input one. Once everything was set in the studio with, with the drums, I would then route it in the control room from the patch bay into its proper input, get the session up and running, uh, uh, arm all my inputs and make sure that I was getting signal from everything. Um, then I would get the bass player going. Uh, usually he would run through an amp mic and then a direct signal straight to the board. Uh, once we would have audio coming in from all those things, we would have them probably either run through a song or just do some sound checks just to get good levels going. Um, once that was set, and usually this takes probably a good three or so hours depending on the complexity of what they want to do, uh, we would start run through some stuff. Uh, usually they would request to have uh, a, a scratch rhythm guitar and a scratch vocal. So we would also maybe take the guitar player and vocalist and throw them uh, in the vocal booth and, or in the control room and just run them direct, just a scratch track to help keep the bass and drummer, uh, uh, you know, to know where they are as far as changes go. And we just run through a song. Um, ideally, we would want to run a click track so they could keep, you know, as close to perfect tempo as possible. Um, but usually we would do the first run through probably without a click just to get a vibe and, and feel some things out and see if there were any issues with tempo and, and make sure everything was where we wanted it. Um, some styles of music don't necessarily require a click track like say jazz, which has a lot of tempo fluctuations. But you know, if you're going to do like metal or, or hard rock, you would want to have as little tempo fluctuation as possible for editing purposes. And um, also the industry standard in, in the recording industry is, is to be able to have it, you know, time to a click for, for editing. Um, but that would be basically a typical day for pre-production. And uh, once we're kind of going, you know, we'll record a pass of a song. And uh, if, say, the first take is not all that good, um, I think it's important to never discourage the artist and say, that wasn't very good, try it again. I think uh, encouraging them, saying, you know, that was really good, but I think you got another better one in you. Or, uh, how did you feel about that? Uh, would you want to try another take? Or try to say to them, well, we, we like to do four or five takes of each song and then pick from the best or, or comp from each of the pieces of the best take to make one really, really awesome performance. Um, once we have the bass and drums down for a song, we would go back and then do uh, guitar overdub. Uh, basically set up, say, a guitar cab in, in, the, in the main live room, um, put a couple mics on it, um, usually maybe uh, a dynamic like a 57 or a uh, Sennheiser 441, really close to the speaker, slightly off axis, provides a really great tone uh, pretty much all the time. Uh, and then maybe a ribbon mic a few inches back. To just, it picks up a little more of the room uh, and adds some depth. And then, uh, then track that, and they'll hear the bass and drummer, you know, through their headphones, and they can even sit in the control room while they do it, and while the amp is in the live room, we'll again, same principle, run through a few passes, uh, till we get what we want, until everybody's happy, and then, you know, onto the vocals, which vocals prove to be a bit more tricky because um, people sing better when they're happier. Uh, I think them being well rested, being able to stand up straight to help keep their diaphragm uh, in, in good performance. Uh, singing with their head straight up, not leaning too far back as it constricts the vocal cords. Uh, staying away from caffeine as it constricts the vocal cords as well. Uh, staying away from um, certain types of liquor will constrict your vocal cords as well. Uh, practicing, it's just like an instrument. If you don't play guitar all the time, your calluses will, will kind of 
soften and, and it'll hurt your fingers. The vocal cords are no different. You have to stretch them. You have to exercise them. Uh, an experienced singer will know when to back off a mic and when to get up close for a more intimate part, um, which I refer to as natural compression, which is, a, a, is a, I think, something that was employed a lot in the 60s. Groups, you know, they got up close and they backed off when they needed to because a lot of gear back then was very noisy and they couldn't rely on compressors uh, to fix volume changes and dynamic swings in their artists. Um, them understanding their voice is helpful and we try to facilitate that. But it, once you capture the basic elements of it, everything else moves a lot faster from there because the band can hear what it's going to sound like even in its rough state. Um, and once you get all your instruments tracked, we'll, uh, you know, we'll call it a day and then we'll give ourselves a 24 hour rest on our ears and then uh, move on to mixing, which would is a little more deconstructive because you want to obviously record as much as possible in the mixing, you tend to, it's subtractive, you tend to want to filter things out, um, uh, isolate frequencies from each other, pan things, and, uh, you know, get each individual element existing in its own space, um, which is, uh, it's very easy to explain, but each mixing session and recording session is, is entirely different from each other, and you learn with each one, and you also apply things from other sessions to current ones, and learn new things and uh, get new tools under your belt for said things. But that's basically a day in the studio and uh, sometimes it's less eventful. Sometimes it could be just someone coming in to track a guitar part before they go to work because it's in their head and they need to get it down. Uh, sometimes it's, it's an all-day thing. It's 10, 12 hours and you're, you eat all your meals in the studio and, and you, don't get to, you get up really early and you don't get to bed till really late. But that's pretty much a typical day.